Welcome everyone to our first user group of this year. Uh, the topic today is the effective use of maps. I'm Mateo Molina Cordero, uh, business consultant here with Advisor, and I also have Marga Lutsky here with us. Hi, Marga. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Or good afternoon. <laughs> okay. So for today, I'm quickly going to cover some of the background on our map chart, some of the general functionalities, talk about a new website that we have where you can download uh, more maps of continents, countries, uh, cities, and states. And then I will hand off the presentation to Margo, who is going to show you a demo on how to use all of this. So according to our chart wizard, a map is a data constellation graph placed over a map. Uh, the term data constellation might seem intimidating to many, but all that it is is basically placing data or clusters of data in, in a defined space. So this can be an image or a polygon. It can also be a globe. Um, so like I said, normally a map is just a group of nodes which are bars by default, but this can be changed to place over a geographic image. This is the most commonly used form of a map. So here we have an example. As you can see, this is plotting households over the US. We also offer a set of maps that come pre-installed with the software including the US, Mexico, Canada, and, the, and a world map. We also have a globe in there. Uh, but recently, we have launched a website where you can get more maps and geocodes to download and use in your project. And these uh, maps and geocodes cover uh, continents, countries, cities, states, um, and here is a sample of the of the map. Margo will show you in more detail the process, but but basically you can go in here from our wizard. You can download the map from there. Um, if you need the geocodes, you can get those in there too. And then uh, you go to the wizard again, and you can use your downloaded map and geocodes. In addition to the maps we have installed and that we have made available for download, you can also always customize your own map um, to other countries, to parts of the U.S., cities, states. Um, and like I said in the introduction, you don't even need to have a geographical map. This can be a logical map, uh, floor plan, um, you can even use uh, just an image without plotting any bars and uh, just to have an image in your dashboard if that's what you want. So here's an example of a map of our of the area of our headquarters here in Chicago. So you can see this is just a basic map uh, that was downloaded from the internet and we just plotted on top of it. I want to quickly mention uh, some of the other possibilities you have with a map. Um, these are a little more advanced and support can help you if you're trying to use these functionalities at uh, support at advisorsolutions.com. Um, the map can be shown as a globe that's actually pretty easy to do. You can do that from the toolbar of the map on Analyst or Analyst X. But also, a map can show links. Um, in this case, these are uh, US flights. The bars are the airports. And then the links show the, the plane trajectory. Um, and for these, the data needs to be a little customized. So you need to have a table with the nodes, um, in this case the airport, and then another one that would have the flights 
with a departure and destination. Um, but again, if you need any help with this, just contact us at support.advisorsolutions.com. So now I'm going to show you here how to create a map, and later Margot will take you through this in a demo in the software. But in our task view, you can select add a new chart. Then uh, this screen will come up, and you can select map. Then you want to click close, and you will see in your page that an empty map chart or unconfigured map chart appears. So then if you click on the red wrench there, you will open the map wizard. So that has a little description there. Um, you want to click next. And the first thing you want to do is you're going to select your location. So in this case, it's seated, so first you will select the table where the field is, and then the actual field that contains the location. Also, for example, in, in the table, you have um, one column for city, and then a different one for state. If you click on this option, field, uh, you will be able to concatenate those fields automatically, and you can use that. Um, then what you want to specify is the measure that is going to be used for the height of the bars. And these can be, you know, normally constituents or assigned prospects. It can also be giving if you want to see giving by, by location. Uh, then you can click next. And in here, you're going to select the geocodes. So for the maps that come pre-installed with the software, we offer um, geocodes that you can just select there. If you want to use other geocodes, uh, you can get them at the, web, at the website. Um, if you click in here, this will take you to the website directly. Uh, once you get to the website, you will need to download the geocodes and save them in the installation folder for advisor. In here, if you click on this link, this will take you to where this folder is. So basically, you can just download the codes there, or some people uh, do not have access due to permission restrictions to their installation folder on their machines, to the program installation folder. So you can uh, try downloading this to your desktop or any other folder and then copying this to the installation folder. Um, also, the geocodes can be already embedded in the data. So if you have those in the data, you can just select this option here. And you need to specify the field for latitude and then longitude. So once you have the geocodes ready, you can just click Next. This is the screen where you can specify whether you want to show links in your map. So um, you will select the table that has the links. So in the, our previous example, this would be the table that had all the different flights. Uh, with departure and destination, and then in here you will pick the field that has the, the origin and then the destination, uh, and then you can click Next. Um, now in here you can select your image for the map now that we have the bars set up basically. So you can select Browse, and this will take you to where the default maps are. But in here, you can navigate, and you can use you know, a map that you have in your desktop or in your documents. So you can select that, open, and then um, 
if you want to get more maps from a or website in here, if you click on where do I get more maps, this will take you automatically to our website where you can download the maps. So now that we have our image ready, we can just click next and we're basically finished with this. Um, then the map will appear configured. Now once you have that, you might want to tweak the appearance of the map. So by default, um, in the toolbar you're going to see these icons. By default, the mouse is set to select data. So um, this allows you to select the data on the map like in any other chart. But you can change that so that you can pan, pan the, the map with your mouse. You can rotate it, turn it. You can zoom in or out. Um, and the only important thing to remember after doing this is to switch back to the select data option so that you know you and your users then can use the map to select data. Otherwise, if you click, um, if you forget to do this, you'll notice because if you try to click on the map, it will start moving all around, and that's not good. So that's. The basics about the map. Um, so let me check if there are any questions first. Um, you know, you can raise your hand, and we c we can unmute you, or also you can submit your questions on the chat. But there doesn't seem to be any questions right now, so I'm going to. Um, give control to Margot and she can show you the demo. All right, so I am going to uh, show you a real life example of how you might use um, our new mapping capabilities. Um, so uh, say you're uh, a development officer and you are trying to figure out, um, you want to go on a trip somewhere and you want to visit some prospects and get um, the most out of your time from your trip. So um, I would first um, say I'm Elise and um, I want to see where my prospects are. Uh, so I would first select um, my prospects, uh, get rid of everything else. And then if I go to the map um, of the U.S., which is already in the project, um, I can see where my prospects are concentrated. Um, so I have quite a few um, in the San Francisco area. Um, so this, now I might want to find uh, or get a map um, of the San Francisco area and plot on the zip code level so I can um, get a better idea of what's in this area, because right now it's a little hard to see. Um, so I'm going to add a map. Um, I'm going to put it on a new page. Uh, so to add a page, um, you just right click in this, um, in this line above uh, the page window um, and click New Page. Um, just click OK, and the page is added. Um, so now I'm going to add a map from this uh, chart toolbar. It, it comes up open when you open a new page. So I just click it and the unconfigured map is added. Um, so I'm going to click the red wrench. And so um, this is the map wizard, which I already showed you. Um, so I'm just going to click next and select the table. Um, so I'm flying at the entity level. And um, I'm putting on zip code. So I'm going to find zip code. And I just want a count of number of prospects. So I'm just going to select count. So that will be what the height um, of the bar. That will be what it represents, just the number of prospects. Um, so then I click Next. And so I do not have the zip codes. Um, so now I would um, click on where do I get more geocodes. And this opens our new map page. So this is where you download the geocodes and the maps. Um, and you can see um, we have the three steps. Um, 
right out front. So you just download and save the maps you want, and then download and save the affiliated geo codes. And you want to save it, like Mateo said, to um, the map folder in the advisor installation folder. And then you have to restart the map wizard. And we also have um, some additional tips here, um, helpful pointers. Um, this just goes through um, how your city or state or whatnot should be uh, formatted. So um, they should be formatted with a capital uh, capitalized and the rest lowercase. So, so I know sometimes in databases um, they're all capitalized. So we have this um, expression here that you would use to um, convert them to um, the format of the first letter capitalized and the rest lowercase. Um, so you could just copy and paste this right into the expression builder. Um, and like Mateo said, if you have any trouble, you can always contact support. Um, they can help you. So um, if you scroll down, uh, you can see that there's several um, levels of um, maps that, we, that you can access. So continents and regions. Um, so we have all the continents um, and you, the geocodes for those. Um, there's countries. Um, so we just have a few major countries so far. Um, we probably will expand this eventually. Um, states and regions and provinces. Um, Right now, this is just um, U.S. state. You can create a map of any state. Um, and then the last um, level is metro areas. And again, uh, we just currently have the major metro areas. But we can always, we are um, looking to add more. Um, so I want to plot um, a map of San Francisco. So, um, I find San Francisco um, under the map column. I just click download, and it downloads. And then I also need the postal uh, or zip code, geo code. So um, go to the zip code column, click download. And so now I uh, need to copy these to uh, the map folder in the installation folder. Um, so I know these go to my download. So I'm going to go to my download folder and copy um, the, zip, or the geocodes and the map. And I'm going to go back to my project and I'm going to open the installation folder from there so I don't have to go looking for it. Um, so you can see in, in my case it's in my C drive, program files, advisor solutions, and I'm using Alice X. So that folder and then map. Um, so I'm going to paste this. All right. So now I come back here, and um, in order for um, the zip code to be found, um, you see here the U.S. zips aren't in here. I need to exit the map folder and then reopen it. Um, so again, next, and I was on the empty table on zip code, and then I just wanted to count the number of people. So then I click Next, and now it automatically um, pulls up the US zip um, code geo file. So then I click Next, um, and it just lets me know that some um, values are missing, uh, but that's OK. Um, I don't, I'm not going to put any links or notes in. Um, so now I'm going to find the image that I just downloaded. Uh, so uh, the San Francisco map, open, and next. Uh, so some locations don't fall on the map, finish. And so now um, I have my map of the San Francisco area plotted at the zip code level. So now um, I want to reposition this and zoom in a little bit so I can see the map better. So I'm going to expand the chart toolbar. So you just click by the little um, triangle in the bottom left corner. And so I am going to zoom in. So the magnifying glass zooms in. So you just click it. Um, you can tell what's selected by it. There's a box that highlights it. Um, and then to zoom in, you just left click and hold and drag. So I'm going to zoom in some more. And now I want to reposition it. So I'm going to click the pan button. 
Um, and then again, you just left click, hold, and drag to reposition. And I think I'm going to tilt it back a little bit so I can see um, the height of the bars a little better. So in this case, I would rotate the chart. Um, so I just click on it. And then again, left click, hold, and drag. So I'm moving the mouse away from me to tilt it back. Um, and now we, I want to reposition it a little more. So I'm going to go back to the pan button and move it up. And then I'm going to close the toolbar. Um, so it looks like I have a lot in the San Francisco area. Um, so I can see they're kind of spread out. Um, I do have quite a few people in near Palo Alto um, and in that area. Uh, but I may, I think I'm going to cut this dip, cut this down a little bit. Um, there's just still a lot of people, and I only have so much time to visit people. Um, so I'm going to grab people that um, are highly have a high attachment score. Um, since I'm a development officer, and I'm trying to um, make some proposals. I want people that are more likely to um, uh, to to agree to um, give a gift. So I'm going to select those that are highly engaged uh, and owner. Um, so I'm going to go back to this page. Um, so that cut it down a little bit, but there's still uh, kind of hard for me to narrow it down um, using the map. So I'm going to say uh, I want to grab people that haven't given yet this year. Um, so I'm going to select 2014. So people that gave this year, and then I'm going to exclude the selected. So I'm getting rid of those people that gave this year. Um, and so now I'm looking at 37. So if I go back um, to my map of San Francisco, um, that helped a lot. So I'm thinking I might you know, spend a day or two in San Francisco and maybe make my way down to Palo Alto and visit a few people down there. Um, so oops, <laughs> <laughs> you have to remember to it back to the selection. Um, <laughs> that always happens. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm on selection. Okay. So I'm just going to sweep over the bars in the San Francisco area. And I'm going to switch to add and sweep over. I'll include this bar too. The Palo Alto area. Um, so now I come here. So there's 15 people. Um, so I think I'll export this list and um, try to set up meetings with these. Um, so export, okay. oh, I can't say there, <laughs> to my desktop. Okay. So now I, that's, so now I got my map, I got my list of people, um, and it was pretty easy. Um, so, and, you know, you may find that you want to add um, multiple additional maps to your project. Um, and Before you show them that, Michael, we have a question. Okay. Um, so the question says, for those of us using the browser client, do we need to put maps on the server or just on the computer we are using to build the project? So you would need, uh, in order to set up the map, you would need the um, authoring version of the software, that analyst or analyst X. And that will be normally on a, on the file server, um, and that's where the where the map needs to be. Uh, the the end users once the project with the map is published, they do not need to have any of the maps uh, locally installed. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so just one last. Um, Note, um, if you find yourself adding lots of maps to your project and you want to keep them in there and save them, um, what we would recommend is that you um, create a separate grouping of tabs um, so to keep all your maps together, to just keep the project um, uh, more clean. Um, so what I would do is um, remove pages. Uh, you just click on them, left click. Hold and drag. So I'm going to drag the map over here, the US map. And then I'm going to move my San Francisco map next to it. Just left click, hold and drag. 
and the red arrows show you where um, the page is going to go. Um, so now I want to create a separator to separate uh, the maps from this grouping. Um, so to do that, I need to add a new page first. So right-click in the page area, click New Page. Okay. And I'm going to move this over here right away between the maps and the other pages. And then to make it a separator, you just right-click on the page and open the page properties. And then click Display tab as separator and click OK. And so now I have a separate maps grouping. Um, and that's to change um, a page label, again, you just right-click on the page, go to Page Properties, and then type uh, in the name box and click OK. So um, that's how you would uh, use maps effectively with our new mapping capabilities. Um, do we have any other questions? Yeah, I want to make sure too that I was clear with the answer to the to the server question. I mean, you don't need to have the maps installed in your machine if you're just using the browser. Um, do we have any questions, Mateo? Okay, yeah, um, I don't see any new questions here. All right, well, if, you, if um, people realize they have questions after um, we go offline, uh, you can always email support um, or one of us. Okay, so I think that concludes our webinar on maps. Um, I hope this was helpful. Uh, again, any any questions, support at advisorsolution.com. Thanks for attending. Um, goodbye.